Welcome back for episode four of my walk from Tari to Newcastle. If you're still watching at this point, I commend you. Thank you for putting up with my face on the camera for so long. That's no small effort. Um, so episode four, we are covering day eight uh, of the hike. Um, so this was a great day because I had had my little rest uh, period in Nelson Bay, Port Stephens, uh, and now I was off to finish the last two days of my hike. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed about this particular day was I had an experience using uh, my drone that was totally new for me, and I'll talk more about that once you've seen the videos. Um, but it just felt like a good day. You know, I had some rest, I had reduced the overall distance of my, or days of my hike from 10 to 9. Um, and it was just, it was just a nice day, you know, good weather, I felt energized. I must admit it was still tough at the end, you know, those last few kilometers. Um, but it was a really good day. So I'm going to let the video play and um, enjoy the video. It's again, one of my favorite videos, this one. Um, and then, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more after. Good morning. Uh, okay, it is day eight. I'm about to get started. Um, what can I say about yesterday? Uh, day seven, as you might have gathered from some of the Instagram posts or video, uh, it was a holiday, <laughs> basically. Um, because of the time and distance that I'd made getting up to Tea Gardens, uh, that was where I needed to catch the ferry on day seven at 2.30 to get across to Nelson Bay. Uh, I was already there the morning of day seven, which meant that all I had to do until 2.30 was sit around and eat and drink, basically, which was pretty terrible, as you can imagine. Um, and then once I got to Nelson Bay, uh, I had accommodation booked for that night. So whenever I go away for a stretch like this, I try to book at least one or two nights where I can reliably know I'll get water, I'll be able to recharge all my devices, uh, I can have a shower, you know, those kind of things. And, you know, while I'm trying to record these, these kind of exercises, um, having a place to recharge devices is really important because I have so many with me. I have, you know, my Garmin GPS, I have headphones, I have my mobile device, I have my drone, I have uh, power packs, you know, all this stuff that after, you know, several days could do with a recharge. So, um, I had this booked which meant I got to Nelson Bay and basically wandered here, dropped off my bag. And then went out to dinner, <laughs> had dinner, had ice cream, watched the sunset. Uh, yeah, it was pretty nice uh, after what's been such a tough and brutal walk so far. Anyway, all of that ends, as you can see, I'm, I'm ready to go out again. Um, so day eight is 25 k's. I will be walking from here, Nelson Bay, through to Barubi Beach, which is just before Anna Bay. Um, just following the coastline, basically. Um, and then tomorrow being day nine is actually going to be my last day. So I had originally planned for this to be a 10 day hike, uh, but again, because of the time that I've made and the distance that's left, um, I'm actually going to shave a day off. And that doesn't mean the last day is going to be a long one, it's going to be 35 k's and pretty much entirely beach walking, which as you know, walking on sand is tough. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge, but it's the last day. So even if I'm crawling across the finish line, I'm finished. <laughs> so this, yeah, this has been an intense uh, experience and as a result of that, you probably noticed I haven't recorded as much because when you're in those really intense moments, particularly the ones where I felt a little bit threatened um, because I was walking in isolated bushland by myself, not on a path, you know, I had to be mindful of snakes and things like that, the last thing I'm going to do is get my phone out and start recording. And equally as I've gotten closer to civilization, being able to use something like a drone is uh, harder as well um, to get permits and things like that. So I just haven't bothered with a lot of these closer areas. And I know that there's a lot of military bases and things like that nearby that just, you know, I'm not going to be able to fly a drone. So I'm not even bothering with that. So all those things combined meant, will mean just less footage. So I apologize for that. But hey, on the plus side, you're not going to be sitting there for two hours like last time watching this video, hopefully. So <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, what I will try and do today is actually record um, when I've got my bag on and show you some of the things I have on my bag 
Um, you remember from the Great North Walk that I had a lot of struggles with the weight uh, on my shoulders and on my hips. Uh, my shoulder in particular, I had a lot of pain from that. Uh, I'm really happy to say this time I've had no issues whatsoever. Um, everything has held up really well. Um, I haven't made a lot of changes. Of course, the bag is still really heavy. Um, one little thing that I did do is, this is just a dress scarf, you know, like any other scarf that you wear around your neck. And as you can see, I folded it over and I actually wrapped that, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I wrapped that around my waist and then the hip straps on the bag go on top of that. And that just gives that extra little bit of cushioning. And when you're wearing that bag for 30 kilometers, that bit of cushioning is really, really good. So I've done that. And then with my shoulder, you know, I really don't know. I think, honestly, the only thing I can attribute it to is I got acupuncture for the first time um, before I went away. And, you know, I had a physio look at my shoulder a number of times. They just said, do stretches. You know, I did stretches for months and months and months with no success. I went to the acup acupuncturist once and it seemed to have helped. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing my best to stay skeptical. Um, but certainly after this walk, I'm gonna go back, um, you know, once or twice and just see how that all plays out. But honestly, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, it would surprise me if that just fixed it that easily, but you know, I'm not gonna complain at the same time. Anyway, so yeah, day eight, I'm gonna get going now. Um, I'm still in Nelson Bay, so as I make my way out, I'm going to treat myself to another coffee and maybe a bacon and egg roll if I can find it. So that'll charge me up for the day, which is good. And yeah, then carry on from there. So I wish me luck for day eight. And like I said, I'll try and take some more video later on. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, 
show you some of what I've got going on. Hopefully no one comes past because that's going to look kind of weird. Um, so, and hopefully I'm not too cut off in the video and you can hear me okay. Headphones. <laughs> one thing. So I don't always use headphones when I'm walking. Uh, obviously if it's dark or dangerous, uh, I don't use them. But if it's just cruisy walking, then I'll put them in. But also if I'm somewhere isolated, then I just don't use them. I just play music on the phone. Um, or audiobooks, if that's what I want. So starting from the bottom, assuming you can see, boots and gaiters. Uh, walking this time of year, or really any time, gaiters are pretty important just for, uh, well, a couple things. Keeping crap out of your shoes so you don't get sand and rocks and stuff in your shoes. But also snakes. Um, you know, obviously this time of year I was pretty concerned that I'd see a bunch of snakes and I've seen a grand tally of none. So, but they've given me comfort that I'm wearing them, so I'm glad. Um, obviously I'm wearing pants. It's important to wear pants when you go out into public. Um, quick access water bottle. I generally have some kind of water bottle in my pocket. Uh, and then, you know, wallet. Um, PLB, that's on me all the time and it's within reach. Um, so the only times I, I don't have this within reach is when I'm sitting somewhere to eat and like at a cafe or something like that and I take my bag off. Um, if I'm anywhere, it's right there next to me. Uh, same thing, Leatherman, always really close just in case I need it for any particular reason. Uh, Garmin Phoenix GPS watch, it's been a lifesaver on this trip. Um, there's been some real hairy tracks that I've been on that, well, you couldn't see the trail at all. So having the GPS has been really, really good to make sure I've stayed where the track should be at least. Um, long sleeve shirt today, even though it's really hot, um, I've been in the sun most of the time for this walk, just exposed to the direct sunlight. So if I had worn a short sleeve uh, for most of that or any of that really, I would have got quite burnt even after I'd applied sunscreen because I'm out walking for eight to 11 hours a day. Um, so, you know, I need to just cover up. And that goes with this sexy bad boy right here. Um, wasn't too keen on wearing a bucket hat uh, <laughs> for this walk. As you know, I normally uh, have my little cap that I've got on. Uh, but honestly, this hat's been so good. It's protected me from the sun. I haven't had to put sunscreen on my face, um, which, you know, you can imagine if you're only having a shower, you know, every fourth or fifth night, putting sunscreen on every day would just be gross. Um, so this hat has been fantastic. So yeah, respect for the bucket hat. Um, scarf around my neck as well, just to again, keep the sun off. It's also good for cleaning my glasses uh, when I need. Um, but yeah, primarily just to keep the sun off my neck. Um, just, you know, again, being in the sun all the time. A uh, little quad lock thing for my phone. Obviously I'm using my phone right now, but it actually locks onto my arm here. And then I've got the solar panel on the back as you can see and cable plugged into that and I actually plugged my phone in and the solar panel has actually been quite good um, it'll be in the gear list if you want to know what it is if I'm in direct sunlight it does charge my phone um, whilst I'm playing music it keeps my phone charged and actually charges it up a little bit so that's pretty good across a whole day um, but I also have two big power packs with me as well so that's my primary resource for power um, and then, as you noticed last night, I stayed in accommodation and I charged up those power packs as well. So uh, that normally gets me through, but the, the solar panel is just a trickle charge to keep things going through the day. Um, I complained last time on the Great North Walk about my hips and the weight on my hips. What I've done this time is put this little scarf here, um, which I think I might have mentioned in another video, but that actually keeps me really comfortable. Um, I haven't had any pain on there, and because I can tighten that more this time, I think that's also helped. I haven't had any pain in my shoulders. So that's been a bit of a win. And it's literally just a dress scarf um, from a clothing store that I've wrapped around my waist a couple of times. Um, what else? I have another scarf around as a belt. Uh, it's actually tied around my pants as a belt. And that's just because an actual belt um, was too uh, rigid. When I had this uh, bag tied to it, it would dig into my hips. There are other solutions out there like elastic bands and stuff like that. I'll probably do that one day. I just haven't done that yet. Um, I've got a little light here. I might come a little closer. So this is a little light. I don't know if you can see that. But that's just for night walking. I obviously have headlamps with me as well. I have two. I have a USB rechargeable one, again for the power packs. But I also have a battery backup as well. 
And then I have another somewhere here. Little emergency light. Hang on. You might remember this from the Great North Walk as well. And this is one of those little crank ones. So it never runs out. And it's obviously not that bright, but it's a good emergency light. And a whistle there as well. Um, what else? I obviously have my three litre water bladder, which is here somewhere. Um, so that's always full. I don't have it on today, but I have another bottle that sits across the back here on top of my tent. Uh, that's another three litre bottle that I normally fill up, but I knew I wouldn't need it today, so I didn't bother carrying the weight. You can see I have my tent here as well, uh, and the solar panel on the back. And I think that's kind of it. Uh, I have my walking pole and my little tripod stall uh, on the side of my bag. That stall's great. I mean, when you're walking all day, sometimes it's nice to be able to sit and take the weight off your feet and not just sit straight on the ground. Um, so that's been really good. And I think, I think that's it. Obviously I've got some camera equipment that I'm using right now. You can't see it, but it's literally just a flexible tripod and then a uh, extender pole. And then just like this quad lock uh, for my arm, I've got one that's actually an attachment to um, the top of one of those kind of selfie sticks. So those three parts together actually make what's uh, quite a handy tripod to have around. So yeah, anyway, uh, if you've got any questions on that stuff, just send me a message um, and I can answer some of those questions. But yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of some of the gear that gets me through some of this uh, crazy stuff. But like I said, there is a gear list um, that you can have a look at, but if I'm missing anything and you've got any more questions, just let me know. Cool, all right, thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, episode four. Uh, as I said, it was one of my favorites from a video perspective. Um, I mentioned at the start of the video that I had some fun with the drone, and I think by now you probably know what that was. Those whales, that was just unreal. Um, you know, I, I've grown up watching animal documentaries, and um, you know, obviously even over my lifespan, the, the quality of video and the things that you can see have just gotten better and better, and so, for me as an individual, for once, not being standing on a shore looking out over the ocean and seeing a spurt of water off in the distance, to actually be able to go out there and video those giants, you know, live in the moment and just watch it in front of me, that was phenomenal. Um, and even for them to be as active as they were, you know, in that moment was incredible. They were going the wrong way, as far as I know. Um, I understood that the whales should be going south at this time of year, they were going north. Uh, maybe I've got it wrong, but I wasn't complaining. In any case, um, it was a great little group, you know, with the little one jumping around and the big one coming up and down and rolling, it was just fantastic. So this was the first time on a hike that I've taken a drone with me and, uh, you know, drones are complicated things to take on a hike, both because of the permits that are required and you know just carrying it it's a delicate thing you know you don't want to squish it into a bag so yeah it, it it adds an additional level to the challenge on day one i had it strapped to the back of my bag but after i used it for the first part um it was so fiddly and taking that bag on and off is such a, an effort um but i ended up just looping it over the front as you would have seen in the video and that made it much more easy to just pull out when i wanted to use it so it was a great first experience of using the drone whilst walking. Um, you can see from a lot of the drone footage that I'm still learning to use it. You know, think back to some of the earlier episodes of the dolphins and um, you know, that particular point where the dolphins were in the wave, uh, I got a low battery warning on my drone and my immediate reflex was like, oh, return home. When, you know, it, it, it's like getting a low battery notification on your mobile phone. You don't immediately turn your phone off and panic, right? You, you've still got time. Same thing, and I panicked and I kind of cut off what could have been a longer, nicer video. Um, and then just little things like using some of the features for it to follow me and, you know, trying to record things like the whales smoothly and not to keep moving. You know, those things you know, I'm very amateur at and I'm still trying to learn. And as I said, drones can be complicated to get out and fly, so practice isn't that easy. Um, but that's okay, it's, it's all learning, that's what this is, and you know, despite that um, entry level experience that I have, I feel like I've got some really nice footage to share with everybody, so that was great. 
I really, really enjoyed uh, particularly that whale moment. That was, yeah, that was great. Um, and then I had intended to do this kind of gear spiel uh, earlier on in the walk as well, but for much of the same reasons as I've already explained about being fatigued and not wanting to do a video, I just didn't get to it. So finally I did right towards the end of the, the hike where I talked a little bit about what I was wearing and, and how I use it. Uh, I maybe didn't go into as much detail as I could have um, as, as to how some of those things interact with one another, but it, it gives you a sense as to the setup that I have and and I mean, it's constantly evolving. Uh, I really liked actually having the drone bag in front of me there. I, it was a nice little pouch that I could use for food or for my phone. Um, so I'm actually gonna, I think for future, replace that with a slightly bigger bag to continue to put my drone in and to add some other stuff to. Uh, it was actually a rather comfortable way to carry it. Um, so, you know, every time I do these walks, my gear changes. I learn things and I um, adapt to those, those learnings. So, this walk's been no different. I've definitely come away with some learnings and I'm going to adapt for my next walk, which I'm planning at the moment. Um, but yeah, I hope that gave you a sense as to how I, I get through some of these things. Um, but I, I really do encourage you, if you've got any questions, as I said in the video, any questions about how I use my gear or what the gear is, feel free to send them through, you know, whatever channel works. Um, so yeah, that brings episode four to an end, which means we have just one more episode to go. And that covers the final day, which is day nine. Um, so thank you again for watching. Do like, do subscribe if you're enjoying, and I hope you enjoy episode five. Thanks.